Making a good dungeon can be hard. Too simple and it's boring. Too complex and it may quickly become boring. But one classic RPG that really hits the sweet spot for dungeon design is Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. The random, sometimes memeable nature of this game keeps the player guessing. Can I help you? And I think not knowing what to expect makes a dungeon exciting. Hey, Bob here, and we're about to use three free online tools that you can use to make any kind of dungeon, but this first one is how we root our creation in the Elder Scrolls style. Welcome to the unofficial Elder Scrolls page, Oblivion Map. Now, I discovered this quite recently because I'm planning a homebrew campaign that I really want to feel like an Elder Scrolls game where my players can kind of have a murder hobo style, but it won't matter because there's just bandits everywhere, monsters everywhere. But here we go. This map, it really showed me ways that I can get into the dungeons and the caves just like I enjoyed a couple years ago. Honestly, it's actually like 10 years ago. And one that I have already selected to use is the very simply named Gray Rock Cave. So we can see that this one lies right along a road. It's near one of these ancient ruins and a fort as well. And it actually has two entrances, Gray Rock Cave one and two and Gray Rock Shambles. I'm pretty sure that's part of the same one. We'll see in a second as we open this up right here. Check this out. And that takes us to this very Wikipedia style webpage for this cave specifically. A special note is that this cave contains 95 Cairn Bolette plants, which makes it the second largest concentration in the game after Serpent Hollow Cave. <laughs> Turns out Cairn Bolette pant, pants, no, plants can be used with fresh or, or maybe cooked boar's meat, I'll put it on the screen, to create a sort of minor healing potion. And maybe that's something you'll ignore if your players have no interest in trying to make their own health potions, but I find that really interesting. So I would make them noticeable, give them a cool description that you can just plug into your description when your players walk into this cave. More on descriptions later. And we do get this cool exterior photo or screenshot from the game. You could choose to show that to your players, but one thing about all the caves in Oblivion is that they do have doors. <laughs> but where this can really become interesting is with just the simple notes that it gives for each area of this location, immediately doing a lot of work for us, a lot of planning that we would have to do ourselves. It tells us that there are two monsters, or zero to two monsters near the entrance, leading into that random nature of a lot of this game. So what I would do here is roll a d6, one or a two, zero monsters, three or four, one monster, five or six, two monsters, and then you could choose from this list of what kind of monsters you would want. And I really like this idea of using a Will-O-The-Wisp, or a Will-O-Wisp as it's called in D&D. Will-O-Wisp. Thanks, Marisha Ray. Will-O-Wisps are the souls of evil beings that perished in anguish or misery as they wandered forsaken lands permeated with powerful magic. So what I thought when I saw that is we could have a Smeagol and Smeagol's friend scenario where <laughs> we have probably some bandits, some evil guys, right? Who are out there wandering this countryside, find some cool treasure, and then basically murder each other to keep it. And one of them, at least, their soul remains bound to this location, hating whoever should go in there and try to steal the treasures that they didn't get away with. And that also kind of works as a quest hook in a way, like maybe your characters are coming here for some specific treasure, maybe that same treasure these guys killed each other over years and years ago, or they're just walking on that road or in the woods and happen to see a strange light and go check it out. And if we look at this first zone of the map, Grey Rock Cave, it is a little more on the complex side. There are specifically 10 to 14 monster enemies in this location, and each one of these has a 20% chance of being a giant rat. So you could just roll a d10 and on a one or a two, use a rat, but specifically to pick another one from that list, I really like the idea of going with trolls. Trolls living with rats just feels right to me. Like they're probably sharing food and stuff, but also like eating each other sometimes if they can get away with it. Just a real grimy dungeon. I love it. <laughs> Honestly, I forgot how many chests you find in Oblivion. There are literally four different ones. One of them's locked just in this level of the dungeon. Four chests. Like, it only makes sense that bandits lived here long ago. Ah, and another thing that was cool about this place that kind of matched up with my Will-O-The-Wisp idea is that it actually says there's a pile of bones in there when you enter. But to jump to our second location here, the Grey Rock Shambles, it also comes with a little description. And that description includes our special guy in here. 
an orc adventurer who is described as being friendly and his only goal is to really come here and get treasure. And when I read this, I found it so inspiring. He has the treasure that your player characters need. And so he can maybe help them fight the trolls and they can help him in a sense doing that as well. But by the end of it, they're gonna realize this guy has the thing we came for. We're alone in this cave with him. And if he wants it, if he wants to keep it, what are we willing to do to get this treasure that we need? I love that little dilemma. But now it's time to really bring this map to life for our D&D game. So all we have to do, click this map, boom, save it. And that brings us to our second awesome tool for better dungeons, Dungeon Scrawl. You can really bring in any dungeon map image and kind of make your own simplified version of it. And that's how we're gonna use it today. But I do have a whole video on how this thing works. If you wanna check that out, I'll link it in the description. So we add an image layer down here. We browse, we put our map in. It appears over here on the left where I can't see it. And we click. And now note, I am just kind of like hovering around here. I'm not holding this. So I have to hit escape to get rid of that. And then we can kind of move this around and place it as we like. First thing I'm gonna do is reduce its opacity. And because our edges don't matter, I don't even have to worry about where this is snapping, but you can adjust the height and width of this pretty easily if you want it to fit to the grid right away. One thing I'm gonna do is tilt it a little bit and I'm gonna expand it as well. Now I can take my dungeon layer zero that we already had there, move it above the image layer and start drawing. So I'm gonna make sure I'm on the path tool. I wanna make sure that I adjust my width if necessary here. I'm gonna turn on roughing so we can get a good like cave exterior uh, kind of edge to everything we're drawing here. And I'm gonna turn off snapping so we don't get stuck on any of the corners. So just starting from one of our entrances down here, I can draw a simple path up. And since I'm just using this narrow one, I'll just use it to draw all of these really simple paths. Oops. And now just to show you how the roughing works, the longer of a line I pull out here, the more rough the edge will be. I think that's pretty good for what we need. And now that we have kind of the bones of this cave, I'm just gonna make my path tool a little bit wider so I can really fill in all these gaps. I'm gonna speed this part up and I'm gonna reduce my opacity so I can still see that image underneath and what the heck I'm doing. And what we could do here now is go back, add another image layer to start adding in assets. Like if we wanted to put those bones near the entrance, if we wanted to put doors anywhere, we could totally do that. And if we wanted to put little symbols for the creatures and the chests that are there, Dungeon Scrawl has all of that. But all we really need to do to make sure we're done is hide that image layer, make our dungeon not transparent, and then we can file and export this guy Always use that rectangle download if you're just gonna upload it to a VTT, because all you do is capture it in a rectangle, click, drag, let go, and you just saved your map. That easy. Now, if you wanted to make this for your in-person game, we can do this, multi-page rectangle download and it'll create a multiple, a multi-page PDF that then you can print out and kind of lay out on your table. Super easy. And if you wanted to really make it like an Elder Scrolls dungeon, of course, you gotta make sure you describe that when one of these trolls is killed, their body just like ragdolls and stretches in a weird way and flings across the room. And in some one of these chests, there's probably just like a potato rolling like in the air floating through space. There you go. But to really make this dungeon playable, the last step you need is our final tool here, Describe. Yeah, they're a sponsor, but they're my sponsor a lot of the times because they're an awesome tool that I seriously use all the time in my prep. So what we're gonna do here is just look up bones? I don't know. Bleached ribs arch above a tangled thicket while larger bones litter the ground like fallen logs in a forest. So maybe you could have this somewhere right near the entrance of the cave beyond that will-o'-the-wisp. Which, by the way, that will-o'-the-wisp should totally just kind of blink out once your characters get near here, so they'll go in the cave. You don't need them to fight that thing until probably after they leave with whatever treasure they took from inside. Troll bog, troll, there we go. Oh, troll lair. The stench overpowers you. Rotting meat, spoiled cheese, old blood, dried scat, and viscera. Gruesome, but I like that a lot. And for the one that'll really make this dungeon unique, we need our friendly orc adventurer, right? I have no idea what I'm about to find here. <laughs> what to describe? Orc adventure, putting it to the test. What do we got? Infant orc? Newborn orc? <laughs> I also see Gorm the Thunderborn. I like the sound of that. It also feels 
like Dragonborn, a little bit more Elder Scrolls. The orc stands as tall and straight as any human warrior, with shoulders as broad as a dwarf's. His long, coarse salt and pepper hair is gathered in a bun to prevent easy purchase for grappling during melee. Yet the prayer book, chained to the left gauntlet of his galvanized plate armor, scarred time and again by lightning and featuring faded symbols of religious significance, indicates that the Warhammer-toting adventurer is a war priest. That's really good. I like that a lot. I would definitely use that for this guy, or even some of those lightning-throwing orcs in the Dragon of Icepire Peak. This is a pretty great description for that too. And right now, the final cool version of this map with my notes for running this quest is available to all the Bob World Builder patrons, yes, even the new $2 tier patrons, who also get access to our Discord server. But if this video gets a thousand likes in 24 hours, I'll make that post public for everyone to download and use this map and my notes and this little quest that we just made for about a month until, of course, it joins the Patreon archive for the higher tiers. But even that archive is soon becoming available on my very own website that is being built right now. More updates on that coming soon. But be sure to like this video, share it with a friend, and keep building.